his support for what Ganpati Nathan said, that we don't need a patentability for 20 years. Technology changes very fast. Please grant patent on the second year, third year, and make the patent available for four, 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 up to four years, five years. And if it is so important, make it the standard essence, essential patent uh, with, uh, under a brand. Okay. Think, think disruptive approach. Okay. As policymakers, if you come forward, then we as also from a corporate will join hand with you in that private public dialogue will really create very agile processes, very agile capabilities for movement of the so society at large. Finally, gap in up to date guiding principles and governance towards promotion facilitation and acceptance of standard essential patents, and skill gap towards adoption of digital disruptive models may hinder the widespread adoption and next phase of innovation. And that's where digital learning and digital literacy is extremely important. What are the final key enablers for sustainable IPR ecosystem? We must unleash our creativity. That's very important. We are all creative. We must unleash it. Many times when you do research, if research goes well, we do gaga. If research doesn't go well, we hide it under the carpet. That's not acceptable. Failure should be encouraged so that people will dare to fail and succeed. And hence, publish research report, whether it's a success or a failure. Mine knowledge, prototype solutions, and then create IP. Always observe the value and discover the value on socioeconomic term. Analyze the return on investment, again on socioeconomic term, and document the future need which will give that pipeline or the pep towards creativity. And finally, you have to deliver the services, how you manage your IP as a portfolio, running a set of programs with well-defined processes, with a capability that how you can promote, how you can protect, and how you can profit from it. That's all what I wanted to share with all of you. Thank you. I try with this and now I think Sonia and I we have a tough task we have to keep you away from your lunch but we'll try to do our very best to keep it very interesting for you I will play a little bit with the figures we heard here before and I'll start with the first figure which Ramon Lutz said he said 41 years ago the European Patent Office was founded why was this interesting not because he said it like this but he said it's a relatively young patent office now, if we try to remember back 41 years, not all of you will be able to, I'm able to. Did we have mobile phones? Did we have telecommunications that time? Yes, we had some telecommunications, but it was a wire. You had some phone, you were able to call others, it was working well, but uh, you had to stay in your house. So you couldn't go out, you couldn't chat with people. If I now ask around, who of you has no mobile phone here in the room? I think I will hardly see any. Is there anybody daring to say that they don't have a mobile phone? I dare to say it. Anyhow, why am I saying this? Because in the context of this all, I'd like to, say, to tell a little bit about the importance of the technology in it all. There was technology, there was a mobile phone, but it had some limits. And some bright people were sitting down, there were some Ericsson inventors, there were inventors from other companies thinking about what on earth can we do better? I'd like to walk out, I'd like to talk to you, and I'd like to have an arrangement with you when I'm just standing in a queue and wanting to wait. So nobody was talking about IPRs at that time. They had a technology, an idea. They were sitting down and trying to investigate how could they have telecommunications, mobile communications working. That wasn't an easy task that, in, that needed, actually in Ericsson at that time, it was a group of 10, 15 people starting all the rest did all the other things, but they were just trying to have bright technology ideas. What happened then? Suddenly, I think we recognized this is not done in a day, but there were coming some bright ideas, and then we also recognized not one company can create a whole infrastructure system. It doesn't work. So we had to get others involved, but as soon as you get others involved and you give them your very good technology ideas, what can you do to protect it? The typical protection is, don't tell them, have an NDA. But what's the value of an NDA? And at the end of the day, you want to have a system, an infrastructure system, which can be used by others. And that was the second 
when the IPR people came into the game. And that's where they said patent gives us protection of the idea if you were the first. And then you can easily talk to the others because it's very clear that we've been innovating this. With that, the GSM at that time called Group Special Mobile, not the, as we know it today, started off with the whole development. Maybe I'm boring you with this, maybe you know it, but I want to say one further thing. When this was done, there was not the IPR person, and I was already that time in Ericsson sitting and say, oh, this is a great idea, it's ours, push it through, push it through. We never did this. We always looked, what's the best technology? What's the best thing? I shouldn't say that 100% of the decisions in how the standard developed were taking the absolutely best things, but I can promise you one thing, never ever, at least in Ericsson, IPR people went there and said, but we filed this patent, you get this through, let's go for this technology. It was always for the best technology, and it still is today. Why am I saying it? Why am I saying this in the context of what's good for India? Because I missed one thing here today. Nobody was talking about the technology and it has to be a good invention. I think you can be very, very successful when you have good inventions, when you enable the inventors to think and to have also good environment on it. And then comes the IPR system into it. Don't push for just because we filed it. Okay, I'd like to show you a little bit what it ended in because it was around 30 years ago. Where are we today? I just looked at the mobility report and I have to read it to you. It's in the, from, it was a, a quotation from the Times of India. In Q3 2015, the total number of mobile subscriptions was around 7.3 billion, including 87 million new subscriptions. The ones coming from India was the largest number of new sus subscriptions in quarter three. Also, what we are foreseeing, what's coming, I mean, look at this, 2021, 70% of all mobile data traffic will be from video. So, if I would try to see what can be um, b building a sustainable IPR ICT area, I think let's look at this technology, where are the best ones in. So, now I, I paved a little bit the way into the technology. But then, let me also go to some figures. I saw, heard the figure before, 95% of the patents are never commercialized. And honestly, I would be happy if Ericsson would commercialize 5% of its filed patents because it's never gonna work. Patenting is trial and error. We file and it's not trial and error just if I don't know if it's new and inventive. It's also trial and error because maybe the idea isn't so good at the end. Maybe it's simply not what we can get protected and out in the market, nobody wants it. And this is the point, I think there, there comes the problem and I cannot solve it, patenting costs money. But filing patents is trial and error. And very often in our company we look at patents five, ten years later and we say it's a bright idea but nobody wants it. Nobody has it in the market. And then we have to let it go. But we need to file a number of patents in order to have good patents at the end which are used. Um, saying this, we also heard the figures that um, the filing numbers are skyrocketing from certain countries. I can just warn a little bit from this. It's not the quantity that makes the difference, it's the quality. I could, uh, in my companies, we get around 5,000 inventions a year. We file 15, 1,600. I could file 5,000, but what's the value in it? I mean, some of them wouldn't be new or not inventive, but there's sometimes no business aspect behind that. So it is important to not play the numbers game. Don't invest money where you think it's useless from the beginning. And here comes an important point to me. I'm a patent attorney, I'm a patent lawyer, but I have a problem, I'm not a business person. And patenting is beside the technology first aspect to remember the technology has to be good. There's a business aspect in it. One has to look, is there a potential for this idea to be to be continued in a good way? Is there potential that the market will adapt it? And then we are coming to already one of the final remarks on that aspect. When companies invest heavily in R&D and when they are really trying to get something out in the market like 21, we will all use our phones to make streaming, to have videos on it. We will see most of it then. You have to get a fair return on invest. And the most problematic point I see is that at the moment, there are early developers of the whole technology and there are later ones. And 
as I said before, we are giving this technology free, but there is an obligation to, to license under fair, reasonable, and non-discriminatory things. We come to this in the afternoon. But you need to get a fair return on investment because a large number of companies will invest heavily. What does it mean to India? I think for Indian companies, I cannot solve the problems of the world, but I can just say one needs to have investment in IPR, one needs to do the trial and error game, and then at the end there will be some monetization. What I'm a little bit anxious hearing all day and actually already yesterday is monetization, monetization. Monetization of IPR is besides selling products which have a good technology, a side aspect. No company makes money, others other than some NPEs, makes basically most of its money from licensing. It's a side aspect for the big, big investment in R&D. I mean, Ericsson makes most of its money out of its products. And that it is, we are back to the technology. Technology is key. Don't try to file things which are not good in technology. Don't try to get things just filed and then pushed through because you have a patent. Let the ecosystem be healthy and working on it. Don't play the numbers game. Don't just skyrocket the numbers. And then my final remark also in view of the time, I think, uh, Mr. Kadam, you said that only 500 applications out of India are filed somewhere abroad. I respectfully disagree here because I think a large number of companies like ours as well, we have Indian inventors, but they, don't, they are not filed under the Indian company. But I think you have a large, large number of very, very bright people in India, especially in the software field. Technology, bright, and then file patents on them, and then the success will come. Of course, there needs to be some money, find the ways of how to subsidize it, but I'm so sure it's gonna work. Thank you. Thank you, precise uh, present kind of uh, articulations of your thoughts. And uh, uh, the last panelist uh, in this session, uh, I'm sorry for keeping the lady waiting for oh, a long time. Right. Uh, Sonia Cooper from um, Microsoft Attorney. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all very much, and thank you for inviting Microsoft. Um, I do have some slides. I'm going to be very, very quick because I realize that everyone is probably very hungry. Um, but I will cut down what I present. Okay, great. So, I'm going to skip the part on the importance of IP because I think it's clear that um, oh, <laughs> let me see if I can switch to. I think it's clear that um, IPR in this sector is absolutely vital for innovation and for continued investment in this area. And so a lot of my slides actually um, relate to the amount of investment in R&D um, and IP that Microsoft has made. Just to emphasize the point actually that in order for us to actually be able to make this investment in R&D, um, we need to be able to protect it. So Microsoft obviously is a global company and our research labs for MSR, which is the uh, research division of Microsoft, are all over the world, including one lab in Bangalore. You can see from um, the pie chart here, the percentage of inventors that we have outside of the US where the inventors in India and Europe make up 40% of the Microsoft inventive community. So I'll run very quickly through this. Obviously, Microsoft has been in, um, investing a lot of R&D um, throughout the eras of computing. <laughs> up until this millennium where we've invested in predominantly cloud and then the future is in 
natural user interfaces, natural languages, machine learning, big data, and holographic computing. Now the investment. So Microsoft has paid $7 billion over the last 10 years for patent licenses and has 1,200 outbound licenses. And I think that goes to show that these patents do facilitate technology transfer in that we're able to share our technology. We're in a time where technology is converging. And so the ability to be able to share our IP is essential. And the way to do that is through protecting our IP. So this gives you an overview of Microsoft's patent portfolio outside of the US. Um, these are our top five filing countries outside, which include China, the EPO, Japan, Korea, and India is there as well. Um, whilst India is within our top five, you'll see that the pendency is actually the worst. Um, unfortunately, and if you look at the graph, the green is pending and, and blue is granted. Um, we only have approximately 150, less than 150 granted cases in India, where we have over 2,500 pending cases um, with an extremely long pendency. So looking forwards, um, essentially, um, in an industry that moves as quickly as ours, it's very important that we are able to secure patent protection in a reasonable time. Um, and so we are very supportive of the collaboration that's happening between the EPO and the IPO um, and hope that work sharing can happen that search reports and examination reports can be shared. Um, and certainly an increase in the number of examiners to reduce the dependency of our portfolio in India. Um, but more than reducing the dependency of our portfolio, it, it is important for a business such as Microsoft's with, with such a large portfolio to be able to select the patents that they do want to accelerate examination for. And so, as well as having reduced pendency, another important aspect is having high quality patent applications and legal certainty. And so, a consistent interpretation of the guidelines is incredibly important. Um, Microsoft is incredibly satisfied um, that the IPO appear to have adopted guidelines that are in line with the EPO. Um, but what will be essential going forwards is that we are able to have some legal certainty um, in the interpretation of those guidelines. And so we hope to see there being discussions, continued discussions between the EPO and the IPO on how to interpret those guidelines. So in summary, steps towards ensuring improved efficiency and legal certainty will allow us to both compete globally and also allow us to provide local solutions that benefit the local market. Uh, this in turn allows for continued local investment uh, from which we can all benefit. Thank you. Uh, we started uh, with Mr. Lutz talking about uh, certain harmonizations, then quality in search, then uh, both in terms of unitary patents and unified patent codes. I think these are the five things that he touched which were very important. Uh, Gar, um, Ajay talked about the sensitization, then he talked about the computer related inventions, then monopolistic aspects, and cost of patents, and monetization. And these are very important. Then Dr. Cardam brought in the kind of changes that are being mooted in our IPO system to clear off dependencies and make things happen in shorter times. In the, uh, it was followed by uh, Dr. Mohanty, touched on the five aspects like uh, something that we 
is sustained and which comes from the service experience. Then second, he talked about the inclusive growth aspects of it. And in the future, he talked about the electronics making uh, digital aspects, the digital governance, uh, data, um, data coming from all places, not being uh, stored. Uh, that, that, that means uh, the data is not by anybody, but data can come, come from any for taking a governance action. Uh, he also talked about the, uh, the IPR um, opportunity in terms of the, uh, uh, in, term, in terms of bringing in uh, disruptive technologies and he, the, the including that of uh, standard essential payments. And finally, uh, Gabriela brought in the importance of technology. And uh, that was the prime thing that not everything can be pushed to the patents, but it is only the technology, if you choose the right things, that are only patent. And finally, Sonia brought um, how within the Microsoft, the R&D labs are being taken as a unit uh, which feeds the next level of innovation creation. And uh, I don't think I should be able to take not many questions, but I would let's restrict to five because people must be hungry and we are, uh, we, I should not come in between the lunch and the, uh, and then, you know. So I will take five questions, so uh, I'll leave this floor open for. Can you use the mic please so that, yeah. In your presentation, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I read on the fly translation from uh, Chinese, Japanese to English is available. Okay. Yep. Likewise, from English to Japanese, Chinese, and all other European languages are available. See, from going from A to B is there, then Vice coming versa. from B to Vice A versa. must be available. Yeah. Vice versa, you can do it. It's so open? It's all open. Okay, thank you. Mr. Carter, one more. What's the definition of small entity? Small entity is governed under the small uh, entity uh, SMSE. No, no clear cut definition. There is a definition in the Act itself, the okay. MSME Act. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Sunil Subramanian. I'm from uh, UTC Aerospace Systems. Uh, my question is regarding the IPR system here in India. Uh, we s we're talking about uh, you know the provisions and initiatives taken to speed up the patent application process. Uh, we also see some challenges in terms of um, you know patent applications here uh, because most of the corporations, at least in the aerospace industry, don't seem to be comfortable filing patents here in India. And uh, one reason uh, that they provide is because of our, uh, uh, because the speed of disputes handled in our Indian courts. They feel that the courts in US and probably in UK are much faster uh, in resolving any disputes related to IP. So are we seeing any kind of uh, you know initiatives or provisions here in India or in terms of fast track uh, courts to speed up IP related disputes? Uh, I don't think we uh, have come to that stage in India. Um, Dr. Kardam, would you like to take this question at this moment? Or? <laughs> See, uh, it is an evolving process and uh, our IPO will also have to at some point of time uh, talk about uh, unified court. Uh. I, I'm because I'm aware that there is no such system in India, yeah. but uh, our draft IP policy which was published, they have some suggestion on 
specialized IP cores. I don't know, uh, let us see the final uh, IP um, policy which will be published by DIPP, which is under consideration. Uh, so whether the specialized IP cores which are being suggested by um, the think tank, we'll see the day um, soon or later. Sure, sir. Thank you very much. And Mr. Lewis, just one last question. You spoke about the unified patent codes. Uh, has the physical location been identified uh, for these codes to be? Yeah, uh, this code is a code with two instances. So a first instance, which is uh, on the local or regional level, and a second and last instance, which is then um, well centralized, fully centralized. On the, on the first instance, there is in all our member states, there is a court possible, which works under the same rules and, of, and procedures as uh, the others. So it is fully uh, harmonized. And on the second instance, there is then one court. On the second instance, the court will be in Luxembourg. This is the central court. And on the first instance, there will be courts in most of the participating member states. And in addition, also on the first instance, there is a central first instance possible. Um, but um, as in Europe, many things are a bit contradicting. Uh, this um, uh, first centralized court has two uh, places, two sites. One in Paris, one in uh, <coughs> London, and one in Munich. It's called centralized <laughs> instance, but it has two sides. Uh, I think due to paucity of time, some of the questions can be taken during the lunch time, but we'll take the last question now. Uh, thank you for that opportunity, sir. And I'm Sadvi from Ministry of HRD's IPO chair of NLSIU. Uh, my question is pretty much to the whole panel here because we have the Indian part and the European part here. What has been uh, the Indian improvement in order to enhance the R&Ds in I I, uh, ICTs? Because I'm asking this question because I would rather go with the number what Mr. Kardam said, the 500 patents being filed, and not with you, ma'am. Uh, it's because uh, the patents which have been filed is from co uh, companies like you or the Microsoft, uh, which is happening. It's not pretty much representing the Indian numbers here. Uh, let me, uh, don't take me that I'm pro-India. Yes, I am, because uh, India is promoting the so-called as make in India, made in India policy right now. And going in with that line also, we are not having individual patent filing, you know, individuals who are filing, or the individual Indian origin companies which are not filing more. So what has been the you know the present status of it and what has been done and a small question to mr lutz here like uh, with regard to the upc model again you know uh, because your UPC model, as you said, the EPO system is 40 years eng, but your UPC model is pretty much really, really eng. And what are the effects and ad adverse effects, and how is it actually accommodating Indian investments and Indian patents into your EU system? And how are you actually enforcing the other countries into it? Like, how are you actually helping? And especially India, that's my concern. There are two parts of the question, actually. Second part, I think I would be answered first by Lutz, yeah. and then uh, I'll ask uh, the schemes of CPIT can be explained by anyone. Yeah. Um, well, um, how can we how can we support uh, with our system uh, foreign uh, applicants and especially also applicants from from India? Well, the most important thing is that we have harmonized all our uh, IP yeah. procedures. Uh, within the European patent system. So it is very easy to get patents in Europe in 38 member states, for example. This n exists nowhere else on the world, that you have such a procedure, such a centralized procedure uh, with this efficiency. And the same we are doing now with the court system. We do no longer in future, we do no longer, um, well, ask you to go to 20 Each. different courts with 20 different decisions on the same patent. You can do the same thing in future with one procedure before one court system. So there's no appeal as such? No, there is a first instance, 
and then a second instance. So there is an appeal for, for sure. There must be always an appeal possible. 